something that everybody should know that can save you a lot of money time and headaches and it's something you could do without knowing a lot about cars here are some examples let's say your car won't start maybe your headlights are not turning on maybe your radio isn't working all these functions have something in common they all depend on electrical functions of which are typically controlled by fuses in fuse boxes so by knowing what to look for many issues can be solved by changing a simple fuse by the end of this video you will understand how fuses work and how to find test buy replace and fix the fuses and relays in your vehicle i'm going to show you how to do it with specialized tools but don't worry i'm also going to show you how to do it with regular household items so you don't need any special tools to do this so why do we need fuses in the first place if this is the source of issues fuses are there to protect the components in your vehicle things like your lights radio fuel pump and other things require a certain amount of electricity if the current or electricity were to go over that specified amount it will damage your components fuses however are here to stop that from happening if the current were to get too high for your components the fuse burns out and stops the flow of electricity this saves your components and changing a tiny any fuse for a couple of cents is a heck of a lot cheaper than changing a stereo, a fuel pump, or so on. The fuse box under the hood is going to be your main fuse box. And this is typically found towards the top of your engine, and it's going to be a square box with a lid like this one. Another tip to find your fuse box is that it will usually be near your battery. If your battery is in the front of your engine, you could look near the battery and you'll find your fuse box. If your battery is in the trunk or the rear of the vehicle, there will still usually be two main terminals in the front of the vehicle and that's where your fuse box will usually be. To open the box, we have a simple clip which we just push in and pull up. If we take a look under the hood of this Nissan X-Trail, we have our battery and our fuse box is in this case a little harder to get to it's hidden down in here. Down in here under the filter, we have our fuse boxes. Now, if your fuse box is under your air intake, don't be afraid to pull it out. It's usually pretty simple. Just carry around a screwdriver in your vehicle in case you need it. In this case, we have two clips here. We just get something behind that and pry the center part open. And with these two lifted up, we could pull out our clips. We have a couple of clips here, which we just need to push out of the way. And this should come right out. With our air intake out of the way, we now have access to our boxes here. It's kicked on a little bit, just give it a bit of a tug and it should come right out. And there we go, there is our fuse box. In addition to the fuse box in the front, you'll usually find one under the steering column. In this case, it's right here. In my case, the internal fuse box is here, but you could often find it further behind the trim. And again, in the interior, similar to the FJ Cruiser, we have a door here and there are our interior fuses. Let's say we have an issue and your vehicle just won't start. Let's move to the fuse box. When you remove the lid of your fuse box, most fuse boxes will have a sticker or an etched design of a diagram. This diagram will tell you what each of the fuses and relays do. Fuses are the smaller, thinner ones and relays are the larger ones. Here in this Nissan, again, here on our lid, we have our diagram etched into the plastic of what everything is. So going through the list, we have things like headlights, air pump, radio, defog, daytime running lights. Typically, when you remove your lid, the coordination of this design is usually as if you were holding the fuse box itself. This corner would be this corner, this corner would be the top corner, and so on. So let's say our vehicle won't start. If you know a little bit about cars, you can go through the list and figure out things that are related to your vehicle not starting. So for example, headlights, that's definitely not the issue. So we can discard the headlight fuses and know that that's not the issue. However, if we come down here, we have EFI, which is electronic fuel injectors. That could be our issue. Otherwise, if you don't have experience knowing what could cause the issue, you could just go through every single fuse and see if one of them is bad. Now let's get to testing the fuses. To start, we're gonna use a multimeter. If you have a multimeter, it's going to make the process a lot quicker and easier. You could set the multimeter to continuity and over the fuse, there are two exposed metal squares. If we touch those exposed metal terminals with the leads on the multimeter, we should get a tone. This means the fuse is good. If we don't get a tone, that means the fuse is bad and it has to be replaced. If you don't have a multimeter, it's not necessary. You could also check the fuses by removing them and visually inspecting them. Removing the fuses can sometimes be tricky. There are special fuse pullers like these, but a small pair of pliers will do just fine. If the wire inside is broken, the fuse is bad. Otherwise, the fuse should be good. Here's an example of me burning a fuse with a power supply. You could see it's a little burnt, which could also be a telltale sign. This fuse was burnt with amperage much higher than it was intended for, 
and that's why it has burn marks. However, there could be fuses that aren't as obvious. There are a couple of things and tricks you should know. First of all, always replace the fuse with the proper amperage. Over the fuse, there's a number, and this refers to the amount of amps it's rated for before the fuse burns out. If you replace the fuse with a smaller number, the fuse will burn too early and stop working. If you replace the fuse with a higher number, however, the fuse will burn too late and you could damage the components in your vehicle. Let's talk quickly about buying fuses. These four fuses are the most common you'll find. You have your low profile, micro, mini, and ATO regular. And these are pretty easy to distinguish between. The low profile will have the terminals set high into the plastic. The micro has terminals that are pretty close together. The mini has pointed terminals and the ATO regular has these paddle shapes. So distinguishing between them is pretty simple. Just pull a fuse out of your vehicle and see what kind it is. There are two other types of fuses that are a lot less common, which are Micro 3 and Max I fuses, but you won't typically see these. There are often spare fuses already in your box. This fuse, for example, does not coordinate to anything. This is an extra fuse and we can remove it and use it wherever we might need. Looking at the box, that fuse coordinates to spare. So that fuse is a spare fuse. In addition to those two spares, I have this little bag with an assortment, which I just roll up and leave right there for whenever I might need it. There is another trick, however. If you're stranded somewhere and you need to get your vehicle home or you need to get to the auto parts, you can borrow a fuse from another component that you don't need. For example, let's say your vehicle doesn't start because your electronic fuel injector fuse is blown. You can borrow the fuse from your stereo, for example, and put it there while you get to the auto parts or while you get home. So an important trick to know is that in a pinch, you could remove the fuse from something that's not necessary and put it on what you need in order to get your vehicle going, just in case. So why do fuses go bad in the first place? Let's say you have a fuse in your vehicle that's constantly blowing. Some of the most common reasons are that you have either an overloaded circuit or that you have a circuit short. If you have a circuit short, it means your circuit is grounded somewhere it's not supposed to be. This means it's going to cycle current through it until it blows a fuse almost instantaneously. So let me show you what it would look like if your circuit was grounded. So in here we have a fuse. Now this represents any circuit in your vehicle. Pretty much all your fuses are like this. They go from the battery to the fuse and then to the device. This is just a less elegant solution. To ground this, you don't necessarily need to touch the ground on your battery. Many other things in your vehicle are grounded, like the body and other metal parts. Is this grounded? Yes, it is. So we didn't actually have to touch the negative terminal. We just touched this metal bar here and it burnt our fuse. Taking a look in there, we could see the metal wire is burnt and gone, which means this fuse is bad. Let's see that from closer up. Now I'm gonna ground this. And there we go, it was almost instantaneous. It's pretty easy to identify a grounded circuit in your vehicle if you plug in your fuse and it burns out almost immediately, then chances are you have a grounded circuit. The more common issue, however, is that you have aftermarket accessories on your vehicle and have connected them to circuits they're not intended for. For example, if you were to add marker lights on your vehicle and connect these marker lights to your existing circuit of your headlights that will overload the circuit with more current than it's intended for. Now these are LEDs, they draw very little current and chances are it would be fine. But let's say you put something larger on there, a light bar or something connected to that circuit, chances are you're going to blow that fuse often. If you want to install an accessory, the proper way to install it is to either connect it directly to the battery and use an inline fuse or use a fuse tap, which leaves the original circuit with its original fuse, but adds an additional fuse slot for your new circuit. There's a lot more that goes into installation, but that's a topic for the future. Perfect, so we now know how to find, test, and replace fuses. But what about the big ones, the relays? How do we know those are working? Relays are these larger rectangular or square ones that have no numbers over top, and they also often say relay on them. These could also oftentimes be snug, but they're big enough to grab onto and wiggle them out. Relays are electronically controlled switches like a transistor. These relays are in charge of activating things like your fuel pump and deactivating them when not necessary. Testing these relays is quite simple and easy with a 9 volt battery. Let's pull out one of our relays and see what we're working with. There are many different kinds of relays. Typically, vehicle relays are going to have four terminals or more. To test this relay, you just take your 9 volt battery and apply it to the terminals. There are generally two terminals alike and another two terminals alike. In this case, we have two silver and two copper. Generally speaking, the two vertical ones are going to be the ones you want to apply your voltage to. You can imagine it as if it were a gate. 
If this gate is open, the electricity can pass through these. If this gate is closed, the electricity cannot pass through these. However, if you were to apply voltage to the wrong terminals, there's no issue with that. Because these are not connected anywhere, it will cause no damage. All right, so if we connect their battery to these two terminals, we should hear a click. If you hear that click, chances are very good that your relay is functioning. That click is that terminal activating and deactivating. Now, again, it's almost certain that it's functioning. I have had in some situations, relays go bad that still click, but another part inside was damaged and it wasn't working. So to be absolutely sure it's working, you can use again your multimeter on continuity and you can place your leads onto the other two terminals over here. Right now, we have no continuity. However, when I touch these two leads and activate that switch, we should get continuity between these. And that is exactly what happens. So this relay is perfectly functional. We then have these larger relays. These relays have more than four terminals. But again, the same things apply. We have two alike terminals here, two alike terminals here, and a unique one in the center. And the same analogy I used for the other relays, as if this were a gate and these two were in between that gate, these two are our relay activation. It could be a little bit tricky to get to these terminals with your nine volt battery, but it's just about doable. If we set our nine volt battery on this large terminal here and pivot it downwards, we can get it to touch those two terminals. And again, we could hear that click, which confirms that this is functioning. And again, if you touch two terminals that weren't the correct terminals, there's no issue, you won't damage your relay. To replace a relay, you simply look at the number on the relay and save that number, and then you could look for a match either online or in your local auto parts. That is the summary on understanding, checking, buying, replacing, and fixing your automobiles, fuses, and relays.